This is Twit. Tonight's going to be a, a Lollapalooza. Um, I've worked all week on this thing. Um, I want to try to finalize a few things, and I, I so tonight's the night to help you all. We're going to go through it really quickly because I know a lot of you already have the power supply built. And I just want to run through it because this will be on the replay. You know that uh, Brian is putting up the, the just these clips so you won't have to run through the whole show. And you can go to HeilSound.com, H-E-I-L-S-O-U-N-D, HeilSound.com, and you'll see all of these uh, great graphics that Gene has done, W4IQN. So there's the power supply layout. And uh, we, we've had good luck with uh, people building it. There's the parts list. And that'll all be on the, uh, on the chart afterwards. But then we moved on to the preamp. Well, I've been talking to Richard. I showed you a picture of Richard a while ago in the morning with it. And we both determined that we needed some equalization. And so I did that. Nice graphic here. Now, there are some that said, ah, I don't want to build it with EQ. Okay. If you don't want to build the preamp with EQ, there's what you do. Keep in mind that capacitor right there, right there. Because I know we're going to maybe come back and talk to that in a minute. And we're going to do that by adding only five parts. And what we've done is give it a bass and treble control. And it worked really good. But I discovered this week that we can do it better. You know, hams, we always want to do something better, right? And... In talking with, uh, with the guys on the uh, morning net, what I came up with was to add one more capacitor and a switch. And this switch is a bright switch. And that comes in my background from building guitar amplifier, uh, pre-amplifiers. And um, that's what we have is a bright switch. I said, why not do that, dummy? So I did. I know I keep changing it on you guys and gals, but this is it. How do I know it's it? Well, let's fire it up. What I've done here is um, I, I've got it all hooked up. What you're about to listen to uh, is the preamplifier, and we're going to plug it straight into the uh, uh, the mixer. So we're not using speakers or anything. You're going to actually hear the amplifier. So let's see if I can uh, let this uh, hook up. Hang on. I'll get rid of that. And uh, let's see if we can let you hear this. Okay. How's the level? Is it looking good there? I think it is. You might want to tell me uh, if it's okay, Brian. Does it sound all right to you? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Good. Here we go. But that's just the that's just the preamp. Now here comes the good stuff. I'm going to bring on some bass. So if you want to be nice and big and bassy, you can do that. And um, I think what I'll do make you a little seasick here. I think what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm doing while I do it. And uh, that's all nice and good. But if you're in a noisy condition, and especially on AM, you need to cut through the noise. So I'm going to take out a little bass, and I'm going to increase the treble. And notice how much easier it is to understand what I'm saying. I have not changed the level. Why did it sound louder to you? Because your ears are more sensitive right there in that frequency range. If we go back to flat, it sounds nice. But here, uh, we could have a whole session, and I think we're going to have to do that again one of these days, on how our ears work and why we need equalization in ham radio. Bring that treble back up where your ears are most sensitive. But then I said, you know, that's not enough. So I added those parts. Remember, a switch and a .001. And it's a bright switch. Right now, we are on what I call the flat position. Listen to what happens when I take out 
the point oh one and switch in the double oh one. It's like, oh my goodness, I didn't change the level. I changed the frequency response. Look how much better you can understand. No, it's not pretty sounding, but it cuts through. We'll take it back. There it is, a little more flat. And there it is flat. And it's wonderful. Now, you've got to think about this for a minute. We're doing all of this with just about 10 parts in a tube. Is that amazing? That's all you're listening to. Right back there, my microphone cable is plugged in. You can see the jack on the input. The output is running over to the mixer. But that's all we're doing right there. Yes, we had to have the power supply to give us the 150 volts. And be careful, be careful. Got to be careful where you put your fingers. But I am so happy because... This has become really super duper gang, I, much better than I really uh, figured we could achieve. And Richard and uh, all the guys that are listening to us uh, in the morning are, are just equally amazed. There, we'll do it again. There's the treble. We're going to roll off all the bass. But when we bring on that bright switch, oh, buddy, it just slices through. Now go back to flat. It still sounds great. I mean, you're able to understand okay, but this is the answer. And that's wow. why the DX crowd loves my, uh, my elements because a lot of our elements has that, bro that particular curve is in a lot of the high microphones. Most other microphones, especially the matching ones, that's what they do. But they don't understand. There's, oh, there's a lot to say about your ears. And I learned it as a, a young guy from Paul Klipsch. We bring up that treble. That's, that's good. But let's do this special little bright switch. Oh, buddy, it's in your face. And again, I'm not changing level. What's changing are your ears. Because I'm bringing the frequency of 20, about 22 to 2800 up by about 8 dB. If I take it out of there, it's still, in fact, it might be a little louder on the meter or show more output. But it isn't the kind of equalization we need. This is in your pine board. And there's, a, <laughs> who knows, you could take that and plug it into your transmitter. Gosh knows where this is going to go, group. I'm, I, I'm really thrilled. I'm really thrilled. And I'm thrilled because all of you can build this and you can build it really easy. That's the good part. I'm going to just stay on this microphone. Here's the uh, layout of, uh, by the way, um, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. The, what you're looking at here, everything else, throw it away. Really. Uh, <laughs> this is the one you want to build. And, and again, if you've already built the other one, no big deal. You just have to add that switch. And uh, that's why I did this week. I just I was just kind of unhappy. It was okay, but it wasn't sensational. I just added that switch and that capacitor, 001. Now, if you don't want any of this... You can see the red line. All you have to do is to take this out and put an O1 from that plate to the top of your level control, and you won't have any EQ. Here is what you're going to do at the bottom of the socket. You know how we, we, we built things on the bottom of the sockets first? Well, there you are. And that's the whole layout is Gene. So nicely it's done for us, W4IQN. Nice drawing. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to grab some shots of that. And, and that's what you want to do. That's going to be the bottom of your tube socket. And then when you get it all together, this will be what happens. This is the whole shebang. And... Uh, Again, it's so easily done, uh, the in and out, the switch. We, this is what we added right here, that switch and that magic 001. And I mean, I was all over this in the values. I had uh, smaller, bigger, so on. 001 is the magic right there. And uh, 
the O1 is the, the flat response. But that's the entire preamp. Here are the parts for all of it, and this will be some. All of these will be on the website. Uh, I think, in fact, uh, Michelle might already have put them up there. Um, and these are all of the parts for the preamp with the, the uh, switch for the bright, and uh, we'll be uh, rocking and rolling. And um, there's one other thing that I need to show you. Uh, we're going to start next week. I know you're all like, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're not doing the transmitter. Well, I'm not doing the transmitter yet because I wanted to finish this. <laughs> I knew that I wasn't ready. By the way, I'm using the microphone in that preamp. Is that ghoul or what? <laughs> one tube preamp we don't need no stupid mixer <laughs> in fact i'm really bypassing the mixer i'm going right into the line input which doesn't go through the mixer and then into the usb here's what i want to tell you i am so thrilled first of all i told you last week we ham radio operators have got to be honored about this because it's not just a pine board project but entry antique electronic supply has now put the pine board project the ham radio project in their catalog. So when you go to their website, you can look up uh, the Pine Board project or call them. And uh, that's the part list uh, that I showed you that you'll be able to get from them. I'm really, really happy about that. But we have one problem. We didn't have a coil. Now, we're going to build three coils. Uh, and we're actually going to build one. Gene's got a really cool way of building one. Richard's got another way of building one, and we're going to homebrew some coils. I think it's necessary for you to do this. Very simple. But for those of you that want to do it kind of easy, you are going to be able to do it thanks to MFJ. They have coil stock for their 811 transmitter that you can buy. It's a big, long, about a foot long deal. But now they are putting it, It's uh, we only need 41 turns. So they are so politely wonderful. Thank you so much, Martin Jew and Richard and all of you down there, Phyllis, so on. They have the coil cut for the pine board in the catalog. And it's a number 4040811-1. And that is now in their catalog for the Pine Board Project. So we're making a lot of inroad in a lot of places because there's so much going on here. The transmitter is not going to be a 12AU7. It's going to be a, a 6V6 and a 6AG7. Why? We're doing that because the, the, the 12AU7 was actually just a... Uh, 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 it was a modulated oscillator and uh, this is a, a circuit that's been around for a while and um, Richard enhanced it a little bit and uh, we're very excited about it it really works nice and uh, we'll uh, we'll be having some little changes down the way. Uh, one of the biggest ones is uh, at the end, we're going to build a little amplifier. I'm going to do this for you very quickly. Richard's going to go crazy. I told him I wouldn't do this. I'm going to show you the transmitter. There it is. Next week, we start it. So get ready. 6V6, 6AG7. It's band switching. You'll notice I have two crystals. One of them's not active. And it's band switching 75 and 40 meters. And it works really good. And now we have really super duper audio. So just so you know, just so you know, I just want you to know there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. And uh, I'm really happy. So thanks for putting up with me. And uh, I guess I'll turn off my 12AX7 and uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Don, what do you think? Does it sound okay to you? Go ahead. It's, it sounds great. And I really like the bright switch. It's amazing how that just, it cuts right through. Uh, just just amazing. Amazing what you can do with just a handful of old obsolete parts from a junk drawer. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> just amazing. 